order to keep in mind the 6th of June 1944 and so to pay with that day, we had the opportunity to spend the day in colville sur mer the 9th of May 2016, where Roma Beach takes place. It is the most famous beach where American soldiers landed to support French troops in Normandy. The D-Day was a mass killing that caused thousands and thousands of American soldiers this. Around 90,000 of, 90, of their corpses were buried in the American cemetery of Colville-sur-Mer, a huge place with a memorial at the center which symbolizes the spirit of American youth rising from the waves. Royston O'Neill was born in South Wales in the small village of Langano. He spent most of his childhood there and also his scholarship. He, was, he left school at 14 in order to become an apprentice carpenter and was on good way to become a carpenter. Unfortunately, he was called to the army at 17 and a half so as to complete his training in time for his 18th and be able to fight. The war had a real impact on Roy's life. It was really difficult for him. He came back from uh, the war in 1948 and restarted his life as a carpenter at St. At St. Fagans near Cardiff. As a soldier, what met several kind of people, some nice one, mostly a civilian, he tried to help as he could, even if it wasn't very effective. Some helped him. Uh, they gave they gave a bowl of soup to his brother, like he said. Some people did share with us, and uh, they was angry as he was, and shared what they have to leave them. But others weren't nice, like German soldier who looks frightening uh, with a black uniform. He may, might have met these people during uh, his journey. So we were supposed to ask questions about Roy's itinerary after the D-Day, but he didn't tell us so much about that. So we just know that he had to communicate with the headquarters about the German's positions. He, uh, however, he told us about tiny anecdotes. Um, it was quite touching because we saw that he remembered hard things about this period. So we asked Roy about his mission, and he was in the war corps uh, of signals, and he had to make sure that the people in the front line could talk to the commander officer in the headquarters, and for that he used the telephone lines. He had uh, a jeep to go from one point to another and establish commu communication between the two sides. Our interview with Roy O'Neill um, was about the D-Day landing. He explained us what the D and D-Day stand for. Uh, decision, because uh, they will uh, decide the end of the war. Then he told us before the landing, he was tensed, afraid, totally scared and frightened. He came his, with a waterproof jeep bec because his mission was to spy the Germans to know their positions. Uh, he had to deal it with the section because he lost them during the landing. He landed in Juno Beach and instead of Square Beach. All during the interview, Ron Hill seemed touched when he asked when we asked him questions. We asked Roy if he managed to go home with a normal life after the war, and he answered that without his wife he couldn't. It was a very touching speech, and we could see all the pain that he felt during the war, and uh, already nowadays. Soldiers had very suffered during this time, and we have to keep memories of it. The association Deep Respect is intended to preserve and transmit the memory, like Juliette said, of the fighter of World War II. It was founded in 2010, and without this association, we wouldn't be able to meet Roy. It was an incredible experience, and we hope our video touched you. If you want to do a donation to provide assistance to veterans like Roy, you can go on their site by typing www.deeprespect.org on the internet.